Now we're going to take a look at the Juniper operating system, JunoS. And JunoS uh, is a little bit different from Cisco, and I'm going to point out the ways in which it's different as we move along. But first I want to point out that I have just a serial cable connected. Uh, this is the initial uh, boot up of this router. It's a J2300, and it has not been configured before. And um, right now the router is off, and I wanted to boot it the first time for you so you could see exactly what the boot process for the Juniper looks like and if you're familiar with Cisco iOS you'll notice a difference right away so without further ado let's boot it up and see what we get so while it's booting here uh, I just want to talk to you a little bit about uh, some of the differences uh, from someone who's a Cisco heavy perspective so uh, the, the history of Juniper and Cisco are very very different uh, Juniper started out in the internet uh, backbones in the cores of ISPs and service providers and uh, because of that its heritage is a little bit different the way it works is a little bit different and uh, their feature sets are a little bit different uh, for instance in the cores uh, Juniper uses an ASIC heavy design to forward packets and it's got a lot of nice features that you'll see throughout where we'll, I'll show you the difference between Cisco iOS versus Juno OS and you will see that the Cisco uh, iOS uh, is not nearly as nice when you're talking about uh, systems that have to be up all the time and it doesn't really have the features that iOS has for or, or excuse me that Juno S has for making sure that you have a highly available system that configurations don't get put on the box by mistake and it doesn't allow you to roll back as easily it's something Cisco starting to do in the latest iOS 12.4 but it's definitely definitely not there yet and that's a big big factor so here we are the box is booted up uh, I don't know if you notice I'm gonna scroll up a little bit if you start from the top you'll see here you've got the uh, power button the BIOS all that good stuff uh, your first thing you'll notice up here is that it's a normal uh, BIOS American Megatrends you'll notice it's running a Celeron 1.6 gigahertz CPU which is you know considerably faster than even with the new ISR series of uh, routers like the 2800, 2801, this box is comparable in price to the 2801. It's a little bit cheaper, and um, this is a J2300, by the way. And you'll see that right off the right off the bat, it uses uh, commodity hardware, which uh, I think is a good thing, and I'll talk a little bit about that in a minute. But you'll see it's you know Celeron 1.6 gigahertz CPU. You see it's got a normal BIOS. You'll see it'll start the power up process here, and this part here should look familiar to anyone uh, who is familiar with FreeBSD, and that's, you see right here, FreeBSD i386. So Juniper has taken FreeBSD and they forked it off and really heavily customized it and, and, and turned it into Junos, and, and their operating system is based on, on FreeBSD at its core, which uh, I'm a big fan of FreeBSD, so I like that. But as you'll see once we get down here, and we log in, you'll see that uh, that has an effect on the way the box works. So typically with Cisco, the router comes up, you're in iOS, you have the iOS command prompt, and you're in their own little world, their own little CLI. And the CLI is the OS. Uh, Juniper's not that way. It's got a free BSD heritage for Junos, so it's modular. Uh, and, uh, you know, that brings stability because it doesn't share memory space between processes and also things are a little bit different so I'm gonna log in for the initial login this box has never been set up before so the initial login is root and password out of the box and you'll see it's gonna come up here it says it's Junos 8.3 R 3.4 build blah 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 okay interesting you see it says root I've got a percent Unix commands such as LS CD slash those commands work so this looks like basically an appliance uh, one of the neat things about I thought opening up the box for the first time was that it uses commodity RAM so I could easily put it up to a gigabyte of RAM without much trouble and it uses a standard compact flash card similar to what you would put in a camera which is great because you can upgrade what it comes with to a one gig card without much trouble it also lets you boot to USB it has a USB port um, so it's quite different from Cisco because here you are and you're in the actual uh, operating system. This is all, you know, that looks familiar. You've got your user var. So, for instance, instead of log files like you have in Cisco, if I do cd slash var slash log, 
you'll see look there's some log files there and uh, if I you know I can cat message you know same commands from Unix so cat messages tab completion just like Unix and you've got your starting up uh, you know those are your startup and uh, logs for different things like you would get in any Unix and, and actually it'll actually have it shows some commits in there and different things. I have uh, factory reset this device. Interesting, even if you factory reset the configuration, the log files and other things you have to erase by hand. There's an easy way to do that. Uh, you can also do it through the GUI uh, as well, uh, which I'll show the GUI in another video. In this video, I wanted to really focus on the CLI. Um, I'm going to interrupt this real quick. There you go. Control C interrupts that just like you would on clear, clears it just like a normal Linux. Control C interrupts it just like you would any other Unix command. That's displaying output. So the other thing that I wanted to really focus on here is the CLI. So you see that this is very much a Unix operating system. You can see that there are uh, files in the log directory for diff different daemons and things like that that run. I'm going to go back to the uh, root directory here and um, just for now because that's fine so I want to introduce you to the CLI and the CLI you invoke simply by typing CLI now you see that the prompt changes a little bit from a percent sign to a more familiar looking uh, symbol now, this, this is what you would get if you were in non-enabled mode in Cisco. I think now is a good time to talk about some of the core differences between JunoS and iOS. There is no enable mode in JunoS. Uh, it uses a Unix system of separating, uh, uh, a more Unix-like system of separating what you have access to and what you don't. So it's a lot different than iOS. It doesn't have privilege levels such as iOS has. So that's a little bit different. The other thing that it has, uh, which I think is important, is um, it does not have, because it doesn't have an enable level, you are, if you're logged in, you this is the only prompt you get. So if I hit the question mark, just like Cisco, you're going to see some of the commands that you can run. So if I do, for instance, uh, show chassis, you'll see you got some options there. You can look at alarms no alarms you can look at uh, see what we have here firmware this is going to show you a couple interesting things it's going to show you the firmware of the OS and the ROM on the uh, ROM monitor system on the ROM monitor system that's going to show you now depending on the actual Juniper router that you have it's a lot different especially the M series routers which is their bread and butter the J series router which is their low end enterprise router which I wanted to introduce with this one because this is the closest to an enterprise router the M series is really not an enterprise router it doesn't ha really have the enterprise services and the features that Cisco has remember they started off in the network core and the network backbone so that really informs the way they designed their OS and they basically started out with a simple idea that we want to make a modular operating system with protected memory. We wanted the ability to do in-service upgrades where you could upgrade just a module without having to shut down and restart the OS. And the most important thing is that they wanted they wanted to build an OS that was very scalable and very clean and they wanted to get rid of if they they basically took advantage of some of the issues that iOS had because of its lineage because iOS has been around for 20 some odd years you know the the standards in the internet world change standards and networking changes and so you end up with stuff that's kind of left around stuff that's sort of spread out and then you know Cisco iOS is, is a good OS but it's very much a evolution of ideas whereas Juno OS kind of had the 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 programmers and developers at, at Juniper had the uh, benefit of hindsight they could look at all Cisco's mistakes and really correct for them so because of that uh, the, o the you know the OS is much different and so for instance let's uh, let's go here and let's take a look at some of the other stuff you can put location information into this box as well uh, I don't have anything in there right now but there's a lot of stuff you can set like the room the building the address the zip code uh, other stuff like that you need to manage the device now, uh, the other thing that's interesting about